Hi, I'm Dan Schmidt with Team Chicago Champ. We are at the EAA Museum in Ashcast, Wisconsin. A great experience, but we're not going to do anything from the EAA Museum. I do this weekly TV show. My website is teamchicago.tv. We're going to head back to Mid Ohio. Bob Hansen, well known engine builder, motorcycle racer, motorcycle builder. In this show, we're going to show my interview with Bob Hansen and show a little bit of the action at Mid Ohio riding one of his replica 450 race bikes. The next 10, 12, 14 minutes, we're going to try to fill in all about Bob Hansen. And he was an aviator, he flew and instructed. B-25s and B-38s Lightning, like the one right behind me over here. And don't forget my website, TeamChicago.tv. We're going to kick off this clip with some racing action. This is the Classic 60s and 350 GP. Classic 60s and Classic 60s, 650s. First wave, two wave start. Up front. On that Harley Davidson, that Rusty Lowry, on that 1960 side valve, 750, right with him, Alex McLean on that 60 Norton. That's an overhead valve, single cylinder, 500. Also running, 350 GP. Up front, Jay Richardson on that AJS 350. Greg Breckens out there on that Harley Davidson sprint. Rusty Lowry still up front. Second place. Is that Danny Rutherford, 73-23. Alex McLean. David King. Alan Walcock. And there goes that 1940 Indian, but flying out there on that HAS, the 350 GP, this is the second wave. Jay Richardson's up front. Stu Carter on the Sealy, Tim Ming on the Honda 305, Richard Fleece on that Ducati. But the class of the field, he has now lapped everybody. Jay Richardson on this AJS 350, starting from that second wave. Goes on to pick up the win in that 350 GP class. In the meantime, classic 60s is David King up front. Alan Johncock on the match list. He's second. Rusty Lowry dropping back to third on that Harley Davidson. Great racing action from Mid Ohio. As we look at these three photos, I was invited to ride one of the Bob Hansen replica 450 Hondas. These are replicas of bikes that Honda raced in 1967 at Daytona. And now we're going to hear from Bob Hansen. My name is Bob Hansen, and uh, I've been around motorcycle racing for 100 years or so. And uh, we wanted to talk about way back when, when I got started. Uh, I lived in Wisconsin, 30 miles from the Harley factory, and of course they had to have a Harley. And I got my uh, brand new Harley in 1937 and I had a special paint job on it, uh, which cost $5 extra at the time. And then the next thing you know, uh, my friends were uh, all racing, and we called it TT racing at the time, but it's more like what they call motocross now. Because in our TT track, we might have a water crossing or a sand dip uh, six inches deep and so forth. What I got involved because my buddies were involved, and that's how most people get started in motorcycle racing in the first place. So, uh, of course, I took the fenders off my brand new Harley and put on some fenders that we made out of. At that time, you could get tire covers that uh, uh, were shape of a fender, and uh, we would uh, make a make a fender out of a tire cover, and uh, so we would 
do various things. I, I, the fact of the matter is, uh, one weekend we would go uh, hill climbing. And uh, in hill climbing, uh, we put on a chain like you'd use on a car in the winter time when there's deep snow. And uh, then we put that chain in our uh, saddlebag. We had one saddlebag that fastened on the side of the bike. Put the chain in there, ride, oh, six, 60 to 100 miles to the event, which was put on by a, another club. Put the chain on, take the headlight off, and hill climb. And uh, maybe we did good and won a trophy. Well, then of course we took the chain off and put it back in the saddlebag, put the headlight back on, and rode the bike home. And uh, we, we, of course we'd have to put this trophy in with the chain. So they weren't always in that good a shape by the time you got them home. But at that time, that was Class C racing. And just ordinary guys like me were involved. And then it started to get more professional as time went on. And uh, I started doing flat track primarily, half mile flat track. And uh, I had a triumph. It was the only triumph in the, within 300 miles of, of what we were doing. And everything was mostly Harley then because that was Harley country. But I was always kind of, kind of different. And if I, I think if I'd have lived close to the uh, Triumph factory, I'd have had a Harley. Well, that's the way it was. And uh, people looking and, and uh, talking, and it, it was just a fun thing. Now, I'm talking about way back when most of the people that are watching this can't remember that far back because they weren't uh, born yet. But anyhow, we had a lot of fun. And uh, now I find, uh, oh, 37, 40, 1940, I was, well, I was in the service at the time, and, uh, but, let me see, 40 from, from 20, uh, that's 60 years ago. I can't believe that. Anyhow, the same stuff is in my veins now that was in then, and I haven't gotten away from it yet. And when some people ask me, well, uh, how old are you? I said, oh, I'm, I'm 82. 82 years old? Uh, how come you, you're still going? And I say, heck, it's motorcycles. I deal with people half my age and try to act half my age. Anyhow, uh, I got into involved in racing pretty seriously after I got back from the service. I was a pilot and, and pilot instructor and flew some pretty nice airplanes like a B-25 that I taught and P-38s and most people don't remember that. And uh, I find that motorcycles are kind of noisy as you can obviously hear. But uh, the story of my life, I suppose I can relate that in about three to five seconds, you know. But mostly, if you, if you say motorcycle, that's pretty much the story. And I raced, after I got out of the service, I raced, uh, well, I, say, I call it professionally because I didn't have a job. So if I had made any money at the racetrack, that's what I lived on. Fortunately, I still lived with my aunt and uncle, and I didn't need much of an income. But uh, so, it wasn't suddenly, but in 1952, I, I got married, and uh, first thing you know, along comes a, 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 a little daughter. And in 1952, I figured, geez, I better get serious now, get a serious job, and uh, make some money to take care of this little girl. Well, I didn't want to get away from motorcycles, so I started preparing my Indian scouts for somebody else to ride. And I thought I got pretty near as much a kick out of doing that as I ride myself. Besides, it was a lot safer. And furthermore, it seemed like the tracks were getting rougher and dirtier, and I thought, boy, I, I better get away from this thing. First thing you know, a guy could get hurt doing this. So uh, I started preparing for crazier guys than myself and still got kept involved. And, being involved as I still am 
is, is a wonderful thing because everybody, I feel, everybody ought to have a hobby. Uh, if it's tiddlywinks, that's okay with me because people should be involved in whatever they like. I happen to like motorcycles. So as time went on, I, I moved on to working for factories and running factory race teams and so forth. But you know, basically it's the same thing. And I can relate to what people are going on doing because I did the same thing, and I think it's great. As far as motorcycles go, I handle, uh, ran teams, all kinds of different brands. And I think if it's got two wheels and a motor, that suits me fine. I don't care what the name tag is on it, and I'm all for those people and for the people that are, that are involved. And I enjoy walking around, meeting guys that I don't see any other time. And furthermore, uh, first thing you know, if I, if I don't come to the race, they're liable to run it without me. And I don't want that to happen. So I'm going to keep on coming as long as I can. Thank you, Bob. The film clip we seen earlier was Dick Mann in the victory circle at Daytona after winning the 200-mile race on a four-cylinder Honda. Now, Bob and Dick understood that the four-cylinder Honda had a problem with the timing chain. So Dick Mann rode the bike, short-shifting that Honda, had a minute advantage over Gene Romero, number three, who finished second, and they went on to win the race. Here is a photo of Dick Mann with Bob Hansen with that four-cylinder single-cam Honda that won Daytona in 1970. The next photo is a photo of the 450 twin that Honda used in 1967 for the 200 mile motorcycle championship race under the direction of Bob Hansen. Sweet Savage rode that bike to 11th overall. Gary Nixon went on to win in 1967 with the Triumph. The Honda may have been faster, but Gary Nixon was on a mission to win his championship. As we see a photo of Bob Hansen and Terry Naughton. And now I'm going to ride this replica 450 Honda. This is it, 500 Premier. I got to ride Bob Hansen's 450 Classic Honda. I'm happy they invited me to come race in Mid-Ohio at the Arma. Vintage days. We wait for the green flag. We're going to take a break here because earlier Bob Hansen presented an award for the best looking racing Honda at Mid Ohio. Back in the pits, the Team Hansen Best Appearing Achievement Award, this annual award given at Mid Ohio, is given to the best Honda. Look at this beautiful 350 Honda. This bike is the, was judged by Bob and Terry Naughton as the most original racing Honda customer bike with correct Honda racing kit parts that were available back in the 60s. We check out all these parts that were available from Honda to set up a race bike. This bike is owned by Tom Marquardt and it's ridden by David Roper in the 350 GP class, but all these parts that make this beautiful bike were available as racing kit parts. And now Bob will present the trophy to Tom Marquardt. This is uh, for Tom Marquardt, and it's a trophy that I'm happy to give to him for the good, for the good uh, bike that he has. And he's the hardest worker guy that I know of. Thank you very much. But it takes a lot of hard work to make them this nice. Thank you very much. All right, Tom. Um, pleasure. And now it's time to race this Bob Hansen 450 Honda in the 500 Premier Class at Mid-Ohio. I'm happy they invited me to come race in Mid-Ohio at the Arma Vintage Days. We wait for the green flag, watch the number board. Board goes 
One minute. Watch the starter. Throws the green flag, and off I go. Get a pretty decent start. I had no points, so I had to start from the last row. And I've got about 15 bikes in front of me, 14 bikes. They charge off up front. It's Pat Mooney on that beautiful 62 Norton. Right with them is Jay Richardson, also on a Norton. Both of these are 500 overhead cam Norton race engines, replicas. These are bikes that have been put together from new parts. So we head down this long straightaway. Let's take a look at Mid-Ohio riding this 450 Honda, Team Hansen with that replica AirTech fairing. I think my gearing's a little off by the time I click fifth. I'm already into the brake markers. Got this right-hander. Leads to this left-hander uphill. Go over the hill, downhill, into another right-hander, mid-Ohio road course. Another left, over a hill, then a right. Head down to the back chute. Get on the gas. First time I rode a vintage bike in many years. Got this right left combination, downshift. Brings you into the right hand carousel. Another downshift, screaming his Honda. It will rev the 10 grand. Make a left, the front straightaway, the short low straightaway. Bring it up. But up front, Pat Mooney, he's got the hot hand on this beautiful Norton right with him. Jay Richardson, like I said, you can buy these components, you can build these engines, you can build these bikes. Stu Carter, Steve Brown, Wes Orloff. Steve Brown and Wes Orloff are also on Bob Hansen 450 Hondas. The same bikes, replicas of the same bikes they brought to Daytona in 67 as the factory Honda effort. I had a great time racing these 450 replica Honda. Special thanks and fond memories. For information on Team Hansen Racing, it's teamhansenhonda.com. And Bob Hansen, God bless Bob Hansen and Godspeed, 1919 to 2013. To get a hold of me, it's teamdan45 at gmail.com. Don't forget teamchicago.tv on YouTube. Search with Dan Schmidt Motorcycle Racing.